Hello everyone and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery, the YouTube channel. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and this is the platform also known as Christian Emotional Recovery. Uh, it sounds funny because I'll say, uh, welcome to the channel, Christian Emotional Recovery, the YouTube channel. It makes me think of Spaceballs. Spaceballs, the toilet paper. Spaceballs, the flamethrower. I have a kooky sense of humor, but bear with me. Um, so, and I've been filming for a while, so I'd start acting kind of crazy after a little while because I'm a little tired. Um, bear with me. I'm a little hoarse. I've been talking for a while. This is a YouTube talk about practicing the acorn technique to heal shame. Practicing the acorn technique to heal shame. Now, I'll be honest. I haven't taken notes on this because I've been doing a lot of mm, note-taking, reading, outlearning, and talking to create these videos. So bear with me. And I'm doing a combination of face-to-face. -face. I'm still doing some of those, but I'm doing some more voiceovers to enable me to get more episodes out to you because the conditions have to be just right to create the videos and there's a lot more involved in that. So I will be putting out alternating face to face. I want you to still see my lovely face and talk to you and you can see who I am and all of that. But I also want to do voiceovers because that does save me time and allows me to do more and get it out quicker with less stress. So thank you for understanding. And also I read off of the computer. So bear with me if I look down quite a bit. Um, if the lighting or the sound isn't perfect, you know, it's hard to get those conditions just right. V videoing is a little more complicated. So thank you for your patience. But so if you haven't, check out the YouTube channel, click the subscribe bell, check out the playlist where you can get topics. You can also get the podcast in a playlist. And if you would like to contribute to the podcast, if you like what you see and you want to continue to help me to help other people, that goes into the expenses. That helps me to have something to live off of as I contribute and spend time on this. I do have a job, but it's not quite a full-time job. It's almost a full-time job. And I'll be honest, it doesn't pay well. I love my job, but it doesn't pay well. So pray for me to find something that pays better that I also love. But also, if you contribute, that helps me to be able to continue to do this and relieve stress and helps me pay those bills and those expenses. And also memberships that I do to do my own spiritual healing and growing so I can learn and I can continue to reiterate and, and teach you this stuff, okay? So I'm constantly learning as well. I would like to become a coach. I'd like to become an emotional healing coach of some kind, maybe a trauma recovery coach, and that will take time and money and resources. And so any contribution you give is helpful, and I appreciate it. Check out Patreon, check out Ko-Fi in the show notes if you want to give either um, monthly, you can cancel at any time, no obligation, or if you want to give one time. You're not obligated. I am here to help you. I provide free resources, but I will start creating some paid resources in the near future as well, and I'm working on that now. So let's go ahead and jump in. Bear with me because I do not have notes on this, so I am literally coming up with this as I go along because... I just have to get through this and I want to give you, I've been through some other um, YouTube videos where we talk about using the acorn technique to heal a certain emotion. I think we talked about anxiety and anger. Shame is a doozy. That one involves core identity wounds. And so if you're going to work with shame, you need to be very careful. You need to be very gentle. And if it's even volatile, you may need to even work with a professional when you do it. Now you may be asking, well, what is the acorn technique? The acorn technique is one of the hallmarks of this channel. I have meditations. If you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see a meditations um, playlist that actually take you through the acorn technique in a more general way. And there are different versions of it, different lengths with and without music. And so the free acorn technique, you can also get an infographic that you can download for free. I'll put that link in the show notes or it's, it's in the show notes with the resources, but you can download the acorn technique so that you can use it uh, just mentally or journaling or maybe kind of minimize it and use it as you meditate. But you can use that and it's free, no obligation. You just give, you know, your email and then I email it to you. Um, so you can get that on ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com, I believe. And I think you can get it at Rachel Leroy, RachelLeroy.com as well. So a little bit about the nature of shame. So the nature of shame is usually, like I said, it's about our core wounds and it's about our core identity. So it's powerful stuff. And I remember one time, it, there's a lot of times comparison involved. 
there's this sense of I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. There is something wrong with me intrinsically. I was born deficient. I am deficient. There's a difference between shame and guilt. Guilt is when you're like, oh, I screwed up. I did something wrong. Not I'm bad. I'm wrong. You see the difference? There's one is labeling yourself and core identity. The other one is based on actions and words. You're not labeling yourself that way. So shame is powerful. It's tricky. It's slippery. Um, I remember one time, I don't know, I just laid on my couch and cried and cried and cried because I had, had so much garbage coming out of me and it was like it was healing, powerful, but it was so dark and dank and heavy. So shame has this feeling of being dark and dank and heavy. And when you meditate or you do these powerful meditations, you have to be really careful. You have to really protect yourself and be very careful. But sometimes you'll have these, you can almost picture these dark clouds coming up and out of your body. It's a very somatic experience and you'll feel like you're just coughing up all of this black bile or something, not to be too disgusting, but it's just this visceral and cathartic process when you truly heal shame. It's painful. It's difficult. It's heavy. Not always. You can, you can do it a little bit at a time, but you may find that shame has a heavier feel to it. We all have shame. As Christians, we're taught either implicitly or explicitly all these things that make us feel shame and that we're bad and that there's something wrong with us. And that's why I, this is just my opinion, I'm sure that there are Calvinistic Christians on this channel and I don't mean to offend anybody but I personally think that the whole worm theology thing is bad. I don't think it's good theology because it makes us feel like not only do we have emotions but our emotions are bad. First of all no emotion is good or bad. An emotion is just something we feel and it's a natural part of the human experience and there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, but there's a lot of shame around obligation. There's a lot of shame around identity. There's a lot of shame around sin. There's a lot of shame around sex. As Christians, and that, that not just that, that our nature is bad, that we're bad. And that's where core identity comes in. And that stuff is toxic. And that's why I think that worm theology, where we're intrinsically bad, where we're sinners in the hands of an angry God, you've maybe seen the picture of a spider being held over the fire, that's horrible theology, especially if you're an HSP or you're just if you're a believer who's very sensitive to trying to do what's right by God and be a good person. How can you do the right thing if you feel so horrible and so terrible? Your motivation's coming from the wrong place. But if you're over, even the Bible talks about we love God because he first loved us. And it talks about being so overwhelmed with the grace of God. Paul talks about this, that we just want to do the right thing. And so it comes from a core identity of knowing who we are in Christ, not a core identity of shame. And that's why it has to be based in love and grace. Yes, we're sinners. Yes, we fall short. But that doesn't mean we have to hate ourselves. That doesn't mean that we're bad intrinsically. If we were so bad and so worthless, why would God have died for us? So what I'm saying here is that we all have shame. Some of it is ground into us unconsciously in our childhood, especially if we had a religious upbringing that was very rigid and narcissistic mixed together. That's so toxic. And I still have trouble untangling that and figuring out how to untangle that. And I've had so many people reach out to me and say, how do I heal my relationship with God with all this shame? And I project God as being this tyrannical narcissist. And I know he's not. I know he loves me, but I just can't get past that because I'm projecting what authority figures taught me about God and the way authority figures were themselves in the church, in my upbringing, in my relationships, when it came to God and when it came to faith and when it came to Christianity. I'll be honest, I'm still trying to untangle that. And I want to work through that for myself because I want to create a course on that. I think that that is an area that is grossly neglected. People talk about religious trauma and that is part of it. And but it's also about our relationship emotionally with God himself. And I want to be able to 
figure out how to work through the projection that we unintentionally project onto God. And then that causes strain in our relationship and distorts our views of God. And I want to work through that in a way so that I can take you step by step through a process where you can overcome that. And I want to create a course on that, but it's going to take some time. But I do plan on doing that for you and for me because that'll help me heal. And I find that whatever you want to learn, you teach. You need to know something about it and you need to have some experience with it, but you teach it. So what I'm saying is, is that shame is such a big deal for Christians. And there are healthy ways to process shame because we all have some. And if we're HSPs, highly sensitive people, if we're Christians, if we grew up in narcissistic, abusive, or neglectful homes, we're going to have more shame than other people if we have PTSD and so forth and so on. So the ACORN strategy can help you process your shame and what's underneath it and get to the root of it. And yes, expressing the letting the shame come up in healthy, appropriate healing ways a little bit at a time in a safe environment can be healing as well. And that's what the ACORN technique helps you do. So it's just a matter of not getting caught up in repetitive in it, not emotionalizing it in a way that re-traumatizes us, but you feel it. You allow yourself to feel it in that process. So finding a balance of our bodies, of feeling and acknowledging it without suppressing, denying, or um, distorting it, not getting carried away with the shame is the key. That is where ACORN comes in. It's an acronym for the process that we use. And there are different steps and formats of ACORN that you can use, such as speaking it out, using meditations, writing it in a journal, and in the form of a prayer with God's help or a soaking. It could be any combination of those things. So yeah, prayer to me and meditation often overlap. So it might be like a prayer slash meditation, you know, um, that helps you heal, but you're processing it with God and talking to God and talking it out. And you might even write in your journal. So it could be a combination of those things. So healthy ways that process shame that actually work. Healthy ways to process shame that actually works. So that's why the ACORN strategy can be so helpful to process shame and what's underneath it and get into the process of it. Doing this repetitively, though, heals our emotions over time, reprograms our mind, and releases our trauma from the body. So it can be a very somatic body trauma-releasing experience that we go through. And sometimes doing somatic healing work and grounding work while we're doing this process can be very helpful. So one thing to know, though, is to... You go through the ACORN technique and apply it to shame, specifically going through the steps. This is what we're going to talk about. And then I'll show you how to take all the steps in an optimal way, but combining that, um, you can combine that with other things, like I said. And then the space, so, so one thing to note here, when it comes to shame, the space between the trigger, what triggers your shame? So being self-aware and knowing some of the things that trigger your shame. For example, for me, it's comparison. I'll just be specific here. I have cousins that are financially more well-off than me. They had better upbringings and better childhoods, and they were more loved, and they have a well-integrated family life. They're not perfect. There's issues there. I know that. They have problems, and I'm not, I don't hate them for it. I don't resent them for it at all. I'm so happy that their lives have gone well. They got what they deserved, but the fact is that some of us didn't, right? And that stings. That hurts because I've struggled financially. I've struggled in my relationships. I mean, I've given it my best and I'm still so far behind. I don't know if I'm ever going to retire. This isn't to like complain or anything like that, but I'm just showing you that comparison and I'll feel the shame like it's my fault. Like I did something wrong. Like I fell short and I was even taught consciously or unconsciously in my family dynamics, my extended family even, that how much money you make somehow reflects your worth. I don't think that they meant to do that. I don't think it was like conscious, but I do think that that was something I was taught. So when I see comparison and I see my rich cousin over here who married so-and-so and they're a millionaire and they're living in a mansion in Atlanta and they look like a supermodel, yes, I feel some shame. Like what's wrong with me? Why couldn't I have a life like that? And that's dangerous territory. That just leads to ingratitude, it leads to harm, it leads to hurt. And that's core shame because it's, it's not just, well, that kind of sucks, God, why couldn't I have that? But it's more like, I am defective. That's my fault. I didn't do the steps or I did the steps and they didn't work. But I must have done something wrong. I must have missed something along the way. Let me tell you something. That doesn't guarantee that you missed any steps or that you did anything wrong. 
And I'm just now realizing that I'm working through not shaming and blaming myself because I don't have all this money, because I don't have all this money in my retirement account, because I'm not as far along as so-and-so, because I'm not going to be able to retire at so-and-so age. Like I said, I'm not blaming those other people. I'm glad for them, but it does sting for me when I see them side by side. That's shame. That's shame when it's like, I did something wrong. I mean, when you know you did your best, I'm not talking about like you made a mistake. I'm talking about you know you did your best. And it's like, I'm defective. I missed a step. And that's why I think law of attraction is dangerous and toxic because it teaches you to blame yourself when you do your best, when you follow all the steps. Well, there must be something you're missing. Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe things just didn't work out. Maybe it's just that difficult and that challenging sometimes. Maybe you gave it your best and still didn't get the result you wanted. That sucks. But shame, that's where shame will come up. And that's where you need to love yourself unconditionally. I will say it again. I don't care. I, I Okay, I don't want to say I don't care. I care how much that I, that I need to retire at some point. I care that I need to have money in my bank account. I care that things have just kind of come easier, not easy, but easier to certain people and that things have just gone well for them and not me. And that stings. And it's okay to feel that. But when you start blaming yourself, when you've given something your best, that's shame and that's not healthy. And that's where acorn can help you come in. So if you get a trigger, something like that, the space between the trigger and the reaction is where your power lies. I'll say that again. The space between the trigger and your reaction is where your power lies. An acorn technique will help you with that. So don't overwhelm yourself trying to heal or feel all of your shame at once. Easy does it, do it bit by bit. There's a saying that's so corny. Yard by yard, life is hard, but bit by bit, inch by inch, life's a cinch. Yard by yard, life is hard, but inch by inch, life's a cinch. It's corny, but it's true. So I got a lot of my ideas from Lisa Romano, Pima Chodron, and Tara Brock. They're all emotional healing experts and teachers. And I kind of came up with my own, and it's the acorn. And I've got the meditations on YouTube, so check those out. And that will help you if you don't know where to start and you want to go through the process. Take shame. Take something specific that's triggering your shame. Feel it. Write about it a little bit. Identify it. Figure out where it's coming from. See how is it different than guilt. How is it I am defective? How is it a core wound? How is there something wrong with me? And take that process and journal about it a little bit and then go through the acorn meditation and process it with the meditations I have. They're free on YouTube, but if you want to purchase them where you don't have to deal with ads, where they're yours forever and you don't have to have the internet, you can also purchase them at christianemotionalrecovery.com at the store. I think they're 12 bucks. They're not expensive at all and there's four of them. They're all the same, but they're different versions of the same thing. So you can purchase that as well, but it's also free on YouTube. All right. So, and you can also get it on Insight Timer. So you can check it on it. Insight Timer, the free version of that. It's an app. You can go to the app store and get it. All right. So I don't want to get too much into that, but don't overwhelm yourself trying to do it at once. And the, like I said, you can get those meditations, but a little bit um, about shame. So going through this process, I do like to take you through the process in a video because that can help you to kind of internalize this a little bit. But um, so the acorn technique is the following. It's acknowledge the emotion. That's the A. And you do each of these for a few minutes as you meditate or as you process or write. And then you move to the next one for a few minutes. And then you move to the next one. And that's how the meditation is broken down. You acknowledge the emotion. You connect with the emotion. You observe the emotion, you reflect on the emotion, and you nurture yourself. You nurture yourself. So A is acknowledge, C is connect, O is observe, R is reflect, and five is nurture. And so for each of these steps, for example, when you acknowledge, you recognize shame, you identify when you are feeling shame, you notice physical sensations. Do you feel tightness in your chest? Do you feel flushing? Do you feel your heart racing? Do you feel the heaviness I was talking about? I feel this weight, this lump in my throat, like I want to cry. This just kind of heaviness where it's hard to breathe. And then I just have to kind of release that and breathe. 
So the first thing is to recognize and acknowledge shame and the thoughts around it. Like, I am not good enough. It's not, I made a mistake or I screwed up or that didn't go well, but I am at fault. There is something wrong with me. I'm intrinsically worthless. I'm intrinsically defective. False and lies, false beliefs and lies like that that come from the enemy. That's where shame comes from. And that's why it's so heinous and probably one of the most dangerous and heavy emotions you can experience because it's your core identity. So you accept the feeling. That's part of acknowledging the A part of it. Accept the feeling. Understand that feeling shame is a natural human experience and it's okay to feel it. Acknowledge its presence without judgment. So you allow yourself to feel it. You don't get bogged down in it. You don't enmesh with it. You feel it and you observe it objectively. Sorry, my stomach is growling. I'm hungry. But you feel it and you just gently feel it in your body. Don't go too far in it. Don't let yourself get too overwhelmed with it. And acknowledge it with compassion. So that's acknowledging the emotion. And then connecting with shame. Connecting with shame, that may seem counterintuitive. You don't, like I said, again, you don't immerse yourself in it but it's more like having compassion on that part of you almost like it's an inner part or you have all these inner selves and it's an, your inner child and you're connecting to reflect have those mirror neurons where you show it empathy and you acknowledge that it's there and you give it compassion because that's where shame comes from it comes from blame and guilt and self-hatred and so you're showing connection and you're showing empathy and you're showing kindness towards it and validating it it's not that you like the shame that's not it but it's validating i see you you're here you're valid you are real it's okay it's okay that you feel this way you don't have to like it to say it's okay that you feel this way and you just show it unconditional love so connecting with the emotion, you explore the source. You reflect on, reflect on what triggered the shame. It could be a specific event, a memory, a negative self-talk. Understand the impact. And that's where you ask questions. Where did you come from? In a compassionate, non-judgmental way. What do you need? What, why are you feeling this way? What can I do now to help you in this situation? How can I be here with you? How can I help you to feel safe? How can I help you to feel calm? It's not about getting rid of the emotion. It's about accepting and showing compassion to the emotion at that moment. But the side effect is that it does help it to go move on. Consider how shame affects your behaviors and thoughts. Does it make you withdraw, criticize, or feel unworthy? So that's connect with the emotion, feel the emotion, um, and that's C. O, observe the emotion. Detach and witness. This is, when I say detach, that doesn't mean you disassociate. It means that you're objective. There is, your core identity is like the thing in you that observes the emotions, not the thing that's experiencing themselves. There's a part of you that is always safe, that is always peaceful, that is always calm, that is always neutral, and that part can stand back and detach and witness and observe your shame from a distance, but with kindness, you're a neutral observer. You, you're, you're objective, you're, you're curious. You have an objective curiosity. You're like, how does this happen? Um, notice how it arises, know it, notice how it peaks and notice how it fades over time. You're getting to know it, you're getting to understand it, you're giving it acknowledgement so that you can start to see that shame come down. Because shame, we stuff that and we avoid that and we suppress that more than any other emotion. Shame is unbearable if you don't deal with it. And that's why you very kindly, very objectively, very lovingly help yourself to work through the shame. So observing also is mindfulness practice. You use mindfulness techniques such as deep breathing or body scans to stay present and aware of your emotional state. And that's where I said you feel it and you're aware of it and you observe the things that you're feeling. Is it heavy? Is it tight? Is it tingling? Is it heat? Is it cold? Is it your arms? Is it your chest, your head, your legs? your stomach churning, your heart beating fast, you're sweating. You get the idea. Where are you feeling it? How are you feeling it? What's the temperature? What's the texture? What's the weight? And that will help you to understand the physical reaction of the emotion so that you can start to peel back those layers very kindly, very gently, feel them, and it starts to 
come up and out of your neural network. That's where that garbage, that dark, dank energy that's heavy, almost like a bile that you're coughing up, just comes up and out, and it's cathartic in a very kind and gentle way, right? You may even cry, and if you cry, that's okay. You're safe. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. If you feel shame, that's a false belief. That is a lie from the enemy. And you can help that come up and out so that you can learn not only to intellectually, you'll have this cognitive dissonance where it's like, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, but then you'll feel shame inside of your body. And cognitive dissonance is where you have this contradiction where maybe you think one thing intellectually, but you can never get yourself to truly believe it. When you start processing and healing the shame and reflecting on who you are in Christ and you do it viscerally and in a way that is physical and somatic, and you're doing processing the core root of the shame and the emotions, that's when you start to feel in sync with what you want to believe and you start to actually believe it in your body, mind, and soul because you're releasing that shame. And that's where observing, detaching, mindful practice and feeling it in your body with compassion comes in. Reflect on the emotion is an R. Reflect on the emotion. Challenge the negative beliefs. Identifying questions, the beliefs that fuel shame. So you observe your shame from a distance and then you identify and question the beliefs that fuel your shame. Are they realistic, based, or distorted perceptions? But in this case, you're not here to invalidate how you're feeling because that's what you've been taught your whole life. You've been taught that shame is something to be ashamed of and you layer it, right? You're, you're ashamed of your shame or you feel sad or angry or anxious about your shame and you push it away. This is about not layering it, just getting to the core of the shame. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of vulnerability. That's where um, the work of, um, what's her name? the one that talks about shame and vulnerability a lot. Um, Brene Brown, her work is so powerful. Go listen to her talk on the power of vulnerability. It talks about it with community, but you can also talk about it with yourself where you have to open up. You've got to be safe. You've got to set boundaries. You can't mess. You need to be careful. Do a little bit at a time. Be safe, but you need to process this stuff and you can't suppress it. So the shame itself, getting to the root of it and being like, where did you come from? What do you need? What can I do to help you? Why are you here? Not in a judgmental, like go away kind of way, but like curious and kind and accepting. Almost like a child that feels terrible about themselves. If a child said, I'm ugly, would you be like, well, I guess you are. <laughs> Nobody would do that unless they had no soul. You'd be like, oh, sweetheart. No, you're not. You are beautiful. And you would talk to them and ask them why they felt that way and where that came from. And you would help them process that. So it's almost like a child inside of you that feels like that. And you're holding it. It's an inner child exercise in a lot of ways because shame is coming from a place where you're younger and you're more vulnerable and you ask it questions and what can I do for you? What can I do to help you to feel better now? You are real. You are here. You are valid. I see you. You are valuable. I love you. You and you don't have to tell it not to feel that way. You can just say that I understand why you feel that way. I, and acknowledge when it tells you, say, thank you for telling me that. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you for coming up. I know this is hard for you and I appreciate your trusting me. And so that's where reflecting on your emotions comes in. Reframe the experience. Consider how you can view the situation differently. That only comes after you've validated those emotions on a visceral level. Instead of seeing a mistake as a reflection of your worth, see it as a learning opportunity. And that is something that's really hard for people that have a lot of core shame. But I can promise you that as you get that shame out of your body viscerally, that cognitive dissonance will start to dissipate gradually in increments as you do this over and over and over again and you'll start to see that a mistake is just a mistake and that constructive criticism is not something you have to take personally. It stings. I'm not saying it doesn't sting, but you are like, oh, okay, I can deal with this. Let's just take a step back and let's just take a moment to think about this and you don't react. That's where the power between the trigger and the reaction are. And then you're like, okay, I'll get back to you. Thank you. And then like you can deal with your emotions in a more mature and stable way, right? So reflecting on your emotions, not as a reflection of your worth, but as a learning opportunity. So you don't feel the shame and it doesn't trigger the shame anymore. 
as you go through this healing process, individually and um, incrementally as you do this each iteration of meditating on this each time through, with a different part of the shame or the same part of the shame. So the last part is in, in nurture yourself, nurture yourself. That's self-compassion. Treat yourself with kindness and understanding as you would a friend who is feeling ashamed or a child. Um, also remind yourself that everyone makes mistakes and has imperfections. So this is where you do a lot of kind self-talk. Maybe you do some meditations and thoughts on scriptures of who you are in Christ. Maybe you talk about, remind yourself of your self-worth. You are treasured. You are a treasure. You are valid. Your feelings are valid. You are okay. You're safe. God loves you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are here for a reason. Or God made you because he wanted you here. You are valuable at your core. There is nothing wrong with you. Your shame is a lie from Satan and God loves you and you are are more than your shame. Your shame is not you. It's something that you're dealing with and you can heal it. But I see you and I treasure you and you matter and you're valid. Those kind of things. I'm telling them to you, but I'm also telling you things you might use as self-compassion. Say that to those emotions. Say that to yourself. Say that to your core wounds. Say that to your core identity. But remind yourself that um, everybody makes mistakes. And has imperfections. Nobody is free from that. And you are just human. That's it. The shame just means you're human. And that's okay. And the thing about shame is that with the religious beliefs, a lot of times people get carried away. And not only is it, well, I did this wrong, but it's like, well, I'm bad. And then there's shame. And then you feel shame about feeling shame. And then it gets so snowballed that you project that onto God. And then you start to see God as this narcissistic control freak that you can't please and that's not who God is. God is fierce and he's holy but he's kind and he's gentle and he's forgiving and he's understanding. Think about the story of the prodigal son and if you can apply those kind of scriptures of grace and kindness and protection and comfort to your shame you will start to heal with that nurturing step. Self-compassion, positive affirmations, replace negative self-talk with the reinforcement of your worthiness. That is what I was just talking about. It's not bypassing. You go through these other steps and then when you say these things, you believe them because you've gone through that process of releasing the shame. And you say, I am enough. I am worthy of love and respect. God loves me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. My value is intrinsic. Val I'm valuable because God made me and God loves me. You get the idea. But that's the nurture step and that's the last one. So just a quick recap, ACORN technique to heal shame, acknowledge, notice when shame arises and accept its presence without pushing it away or judging yourself for feeling it. When you do that slowly and viscerally, it's like, well, how do I do it? Well, that's what I'm showing you right here is how to do it exactly and different ways that you can apply that. And then um, doing the meditation, it will take you through that process. You can apply shame to it, even though the meditation is more general. You can apply any emotion to it, fear, anger, depression, shame, um, anything really that's difficult. So acknowledge, notice when shame arises and accept it its presence without pushing it away or judging yourself for feeling it. Connect. Connect is C. Reflect on the triggers and sources of your shame. Understand the specific thoughts and situations that bring up these feelings. That's connect. Observe. O is practice mindfulness to observe your shame without getting entangled in it. Allow yourself to feel the emotion fully and observe its patterns. That's observe. That's O in the acorn. R, reflect. Engage in reflective practices such as journaling or talking to a trusted friend or therapist to explore um, and challenge the beliefs underlying your shame. You can also do this through and with the meditation as well. Keep in mind you can do these steps sometimes separately or sometimes you may do a little bit of one or the other. They may overlap a little bit. It's not just R. I mean A, C, O, R. That does give it structure, but it, you may find that some of these overlap a little bit. You do these in your own life in other ways separately and that's okay. And so the last one is in nurture, practice self-compassion and self-care, engage in activities that bring you fulfillment and affirm your inherent worth in Christ and in yourself and remind yourself that you are loved and accepted. 
And so some ways that you can do this are through spiritual reflection, incorporating prayer and meditation into your reflection process, ask for God's guidance and healing from shame. And that's why I created the ACORN meditation, which does integrate faith and God into the meditation process. Scriptural encouragement, read and meditate on Bible verses that affirm your worth in God's eyes. For example, Romans 8, 1 and Psalms 139:14. Faith community support. There are emotional recovery communities that are Christian-based. One of them is Celebrate Recovery. I think that one focuses more on addiction, but there are also people with PTSD and in emotional recovery, or both as well. So they're going through the same process. It's a very similar process. People with addiction have so much shame that they have to work through, and so this is very healing for them too. So ACORN can really help you if you're struggling with a mental illness or an addiction, but please, 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 if you have any of those, please seek professional help as well. This is not a, I know people say that all the time, but it's true. It's not a substitute for that. It will help you, but it's not a substitute for that. So engage in activities that bring joy and fulfillment, um, scriptural encouragement, faith community support. Seek support from your faith community. Share your struggles with trusted individuals who can provide encouragement and prayer. They might pray with you or over you or for you as well. And this could be in person or online. If you can't or don't feel comfortable with something in person, you can find online communities as well. Facebook groups, private groups. That's something else I want to do as well. I want to create a more integrated and interactive community off of Facebook because I don't want Facebook to own that. And I want it to, I don't want to have to follow a lot of their stupid rules. I understand the ones about no, sh no hate, no shame and stuff like that. I agree with those, but there's also some stupid stuff that puts you in Facebook jail where you have to watch everything you say. So I want to do something outside of fascist um, Facebook and get our own community separate from that. The Facebook group will always be there. It'll always be free as long as I'm able to do it. But I would like to have some kind of um, cheap paid, but spiritual community where you can get more, we can get more involved and do more interaction, like webinars and Q&As and um, discussion groups and stuff like that. I would love that. And since I've already facilitated that my whole life as an instructor, I feel pretty confident that I can do that for you. So... Lastly, forgiveness and grace. Healing shame with the acorn technique. Forgiveness and grace. Embrace God's forgiveness and grace. Recognize that you are forgiven. And that's the more important part of it than you are defective. You are forgiven. And maybe there are even things that you've done that you don't need forgiveness for, but you need to forgive yourself. And then there are things that maybe you've done or thought or said that you do need to forgive. Ask God for forgiveness. But then forgive yourself too. Let yourself be in that forgiveness. Dwell in it. Accept it. Know that you're forgiven. And that's where releasing the shame helps you to realize the shame is where you can't let go and you can't forgive yourself. And so when you release the shame, you're able to find that peace with God, with yourself, and to heal that and to forgive yourself and to accept God's love and forgiveness because God's love for you is unconditional. So that's the acorn technique to heal shame. Thank you for following me. I know some of these YouTubes lately have been long, but I'm going to do some shorter ones that are voiceovers that will be more specific. And I'll use like got, um, like charts and stuff so you can actually, I'll take you through it and you can see it instead of seeing my face. So I hope this has been helpful, but applying the acorn technique in a mindful and compassionate way, you can work through the difficult emotions associated with shame and move for, towards healing and self-acceptance. And as I always say, live the life that God intended for you to live. God doesn't want you to feel shame. Who wants you to feel shame? The enemy, because the enemy is the accuser. And what does accusation lead to? It leads to shame. That's exactly Exactly what it is. Oh, well, you did this. Oh, well, there's something wrong with you. Oh, well, you're bad. Oh, well, you're defective. Well, you're doing something wrong. Well, you're just not doing enough. Well, maybe you missed something. I'm not saying that there's never something we miss or that's things we don't need to work on, but I'm talking about when it becomes your core identity. I've struggled with that with my finances. I've struggled with that with my comparison of other people that I love so much. I don't want it to hurt my relationship with them, but it has. God forgive me, it has. And so I've had to work on this and I'm still struggling and I'm still working on it and working through it, but it's gotten better. And if you do this incrementally, you will start to see 
progress. And you'll start to see that cognitive dissonance between what you're affirming in Christ and what you actually feel and know to be true will come together and be in sync. And you'll actually believe it in your body because you're releasing that trauma somatically. You see how faith and um, psychology come together so neatly? It works. It works. So thank you so much for following me. God bless you. Remember that this was the ACORN technique on healing shame. The ACORN, practicing the ACORN technique to heal shame. This is Rachel Leroy, Christian Emotional Recovery. Click the subscribe bell so you can get notifications every time a new podcast or a new YouTube video drops. And I will see you on the next one. Check out the show notes for everything I mentioned at the beginning of the um, talk. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.